Imagine how truly pathetic it would be to be a major political party leader in Canada and not actually having your own party's base wanting you to win the next election. Yes, your base might actually show up and vote for you in the next election, but they don't actually hope that enough other Canadians show up and vote for you that you'd be able to win a majority government. They feel far more comfortable with you being in a minority government situation, whether it's that they just don't think you can handle the power of a majority government, or they think that you are so corrupt and scandal ridden. While they agree with your ideology, they still want you counterbalanced by another coalition partner who can hold you accountable. And as pathetic as the situation is that I've just described, this is the exact scenario that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party find themselves in. According to a stat from a recent Angus Reid poll that was a federal national poll, the Liberal Party has 52% of its 2021 voters wanting them to only win a minority government. This is what they consider the best outcome after another election. I'll just pull up the, the, the uh, stat sheet right here. The question was, which of the following options do you believe would provide the best government for Canada over the next four years? And it's best underlined, so I doubt anyone missed what this question was specifically trying to get at. And for the Liberal Party, only 30% of their 2021 voters want them to win a majority government. 52% want them to win a minority. 7 want the Conservatives to win a majority. And 11 want the Conservatives to win a minority. And now compare that to the Conservatives where 82% of the 2021 voters want them to win a majority government and 12% want them to win a minority. And I guarantee the minority uh, section for the Conservatives is made up of a lot of Quebecers and maritime voters who tend to lean a bit more center-left and maybe want their party counterbalanced by the Liberals or by the Bloc. Regardless, this is an awful position to be in as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, because while the other polls, like the national polls, are showing that the uh, the Liberals are down anywhere from you know eight to fourteen points behind the Conservatives, which is already bad enough. What this is showing is that the Liberal Party, if they ever want to crawl back in the polls, it's not just a matter of being able to appeal to Canadians on the fence. They first have to reestablish their own basically credibility within the party. They cannot actually hope to win conservatives over to their side or people who don't know who they want to vote for yet until they've gotten their own party to actually believe in them running a majority government. I doubt that they can appeal to the average Canadian if they can't even vote, they can't even appeal to their own past voters. This is not exactly a situation that Justin Trudeau, I think, is even equipped to recovering from. To, because to recover from this, Justin Trudeau would have to have the maturity to be able to say, I've made these five mistakes and this is the path I'm going to take to be able to correct all these mistakes that I've made and put Canada on a better road to prosperity. He'll never do that because he's too used to, since becoming prime minister, having the media sort of paparazzi always defending him, always saying everything he's doing is fantastic, everything that the conservatives say and do is cruel and disgusting and bigoted. So he's just hoping that somehow the legacy media is able to t take uh, take Pierre Polly and the conservatives down a notch or that his own party is able to launch enough attacks that maybe like you know Canadians get freaked out and then come home to the liberals. I assume that the liberals will improve a little bit as the next election approaches because elections tend to make people kind of a little bit silly in the head. People tend to return to a party that hasn't done anything for them because they that's what they voted for last time. But I don't think it's going to be enough for Justin Trudeau to ever be able to be prime minister again. I think that if you were ever looking for a nail in Justin Trudeau's political coffin, this stat was it. 52% of his party not wanting him to actually succeed that much. Now, this other stat from Angus Reid I thought was also interesting. The question here was, which of the following federal parties and leaders do you think is best suited to handle Canada's economy? Now, of course, the Conservative Party, it's 85% believe in Pierre Polly and the Conservative Party, and it's like... 3% between the NDP and uh, and liberals. So that's probably just, again, the red Tory flakes that are leaving the party after Justin Trudeau stopped being leader. You know, all the people who buy into media propaganda, like, oh, the conservative party's bigoted because they want, you know, women's washrooms to be for women. And then there's, you know, 10% of conservatives who just don't know, which probably just means a lot of people who voted conservative in 2021, but just haven't been paying much attention. But again, jump over to the liberal party stat here. 54% think that their own party is the best suited party to handling the economy right now. And again, remember this other stat, 52% wants them to win a minority government. And if you combine that with the uh, the stat of people who want them to win a majority, there's 80, there's 82% of a liberal of liberal party supporters from 2021 who want the liberals to win the most seats. But only 54% of liberals actually think that they're the best party for handling the economy. 
Thirteen percent it's the end, think it's the NDP that's the best. Twelve percent think it's the conservatives, and twenty-one percent don't know. That is an incredibly indecisive base for being such a well-established party in Canada. And even the NDP have twelve percent of Canadians thinking that it would be best for the uh, the conservatives to be running the country. And of course, these are twenty twenty one voters, so it doesn't mean that they're still hardcore supporters. And they've just recently flipped. They might have flipped a year ago, two years ago. They might have been hardcore conservatives for the last two years. But at the very least, that was their decision in 2021. And right now, they don't know what to do, or at least they flipped to a different party, or they're staying where they're at. And with, again, the Liberals, which is a over 100-year-old brand, when you cannot actually keep your party, the, like you can't actually keep the party base coherent, when the party base does not know what they want, that spells trouble for you. That when you do not actually have your base uh, aligned for the party's goals, you're not going to be able to get volunteers or donors or any of the things that you need to be able to run a proper campaign. Justin Trudeau is running a, an election with a, a with a sort of tired base of supporters. They're reluctant supporters, and uh, you cannot win uh, like an, an election with a reluctant base. Doug Ford kind of did it in 2022, but it's just because all the parties pretty much have reluctant bases, and his was the least pathetic compared to the uh, the Ontario NDP and the Ontario Liberals. And combine this with Justin Trudeau's approval ratings, which show that there's only about you know 32% maximum uh, percentage of Canadians who actually think he's doing a good job. He doesn't have any room to grow. So while his stats are low now, even if he pushes really hard, I only see him adding maximum 5% to his latest polling numbers. And when I say 5%, I mean being added to 26%. So right now, I think his ceiling is only 31% of Canadians who will show back up for the Liberal Party. The party just doesn't have a vision, and that is reflected by the Liberal Party's base not actually wanting them to win the next election. They kind of maybe still want to vote Liberal, but they are not really sure if the Liberal Party really has a proper vision to lead Canada forward. So I think a lot of those people saying, yeah, Liberal Party minority sounds good to me, I guarantee you those people are highly susceptible to voting Conservative next election because the Conservatives, while they might not agree with everything the Conservatives say and do, because obviously if you were able to be swayed to the Liberals, you probably have some ideological disagreements with the Conservatives, you could at least agree that Polyev has a bold vision, that his small government vision for Canada is at least better than Justin Trudeau's excuse making for all the terrible policy outcomes that Justin Trudeau, because he's used to the liberal media propping him up, he's never actually had to, you know, chart a new path for Canada as his policies fail. He's just hoping that the liberal media is going to tell Canadians that, you know, actually all the failed policies that Justin Trudeau has been pushing out are secretly good. Just read this stupid study I have showing that all the all the policies are actually secretly amazing. Did you know that you actually make money on the carbon tax? Like, not in garbage like that. It doesn't work anymore. And I don't think that Justin Trudeau is, you know, enough of an adult to, to admit when he's made a mistake and maybe gain some of the respect of Canadians back by proving that he's not just an egomaniac. Anyways, but that's it for me today. Just like I usually do, I have my uh, the, in the description of this video, my fundraiser for my legal costs. I'm being sued by a Chinese billionaire. I'm currently winning that case, but it still cost me $15,000 to fight it. So if you can pitch any money in there, that's greatly appreciated. And then I also have a link for the TNT email list. If you live in the Calgary area, I... I like I'd ask you to sign up for that because Ben Shapiro is doing a live show in Southwest Calgary. And if you sign up for the email list, I'll be putting out a ticket code for early bird tickets on September 12th, two days before the uh, tickets go publicly on sale for the event through the Wilberforce project. So if you sign up for that, I'll email you the early bird tickets code so that you can make sure that you lock in your ticket for that great, uh, that great event. So that's going to happen. Anyways, that's it for me today. And I hope everyone has a fantastic uh, rest of the weekend.